This is part two in the tap and screw jig tutorial. I'll be making, well starting, on making the tap for making the nuts. Now the first thing that you have to do is make the guide for the tap. This is the piece that guides the dowel of the tap into your workpiece in a spiral, creating the nut. Um, when choosing the material for your guide, you want to use a hardwood ideally but you can use softwood. That's what I've used for this one and it works just fine. And I'm sure it just won't last quite as long as if you're to use hardwood. Um, I'll be making a guide which is a slight modification to this one. Um, so in that case you only need a piece of stock which is about two inches thick. Um, though going any thicker would be perfectly fine as well. Um, so then after you get your material, you can drill the internal diameter of your screw into the guide. I'll be making one inch diameter screws with four teeth per inch. So the internal diameter of my screw is three quarters of an inch. So that is the size of hole that I've drilled in here. You wanna make sure that your guide block is approximately, um, well, no, no shorter than five inches long. Um, but you wouldn't really want to go too much longer, maybe eight inches at the max. Um, even that would be kind of pushing it if you're using a hardwood. If you're using a softwood, it's not so bad. And the reason I say that is because you'll need to use a handsaw to cut the kerf in the guide for the steel plate to go in. And, um, well, if you got to cut that with a handsaw, um, especially in hardwood, it's fairly difficult. So that's why I'm doing mine only five inches thick. And ideally, this wouldn't be great, especially if you have a larger size hole. Um, but like I said, this guide is going to be a slight modification to this one. And you'll see why that having such a short piece later will be just fine. So after you have the hole in your guide drilled, um, the next thing you have to do on the guide is to cut the kerf for the steel plate. Um, but you can't do that until you get the um, dowel for the tap made because you have to get the um, dimensions for the um, spiral. You got to get the pitch set up be, um, in order to cut the kerf into the guide. So that's what we'll do next. We'll start work on the tap. Here I have the blank for my taps dowel chucked up on my lathe. This is the reason you want to make your guide block first and have the hole drilled in your guide block so that you can size the, the dowel to that hole. You want a nice fit so that it's not too sloppy, giving you an inaccurate nut, but you also don't want it too tight so that you're having to apply um, more force um, than is already necessary in tapping the nut. So you can go ahead and start turning the blank. So <clears throat> have your calipers set to the um, rough size of the hole. I usually set it the slightest bit larger than the size of the hole. Then I start turning the tip of the dowel down to size. And once the calipers say it's at thickness, I test it out. And you can see it's a little too thick still. It won't go inside the hole. So just keep turning it down until you get it and set your calipers to that and then you can turn the rest of your rest of the dowel down to the size of the hole. You can see there it just started going in. So I make sure my calipers are set right there. And then I can turn the rest of the dowel down to that size. So here I have the dowel. The whole thing has been turned 
down to the size of the calipers. But you can see it's still kind of tight. And that's perfect because then you can chuck it back up on the lathe and um, use some sandpaper to even out and smooth the entire surface. Now you may not need to perfectly size the back of the dowel anyways because it won't be going into any hole. So see there, that's good enough. You won't, that won't ever need to enter the workpiece. Um, I mean, most likely. So now that we have the dowel sized, we can lay out for the the kerf in the dowel. So now that we have the dowel turned to size we can lay out the spiral that we'll be cutting into it. You can get yourself a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be grid paper but it's handy. And then you can wrap it around the dowel. So wrap the paper around. And then mark on the top of the paper where the bottom edge of the paper here meets up. So, see there I have my mark, then I will run a line along the paper parallel with this edge along that line and we can mark out for the spiral. So here's my paper. I had marked it right here. So I drew a line from that point parallel to this bottom edge. And then you can lay out your diagonal lines. And since I'm doing four, to, four teeth per inch, you um, move by quarters of an inch. So I start in this bottom corner, then along this edge I move up a quarter and then connect those two dots. So then I would do that again Go from this, cor this uh, corner here, up a quarter inch to there. And then you continue that all the way up. Now make sure that when you do this, you mark your diagonals properly, that you go from left, up, right. If you went the other way around, if you went from right and then up left, then you would be making a screw that goes um, righty loosey and lefty tighty. And so you'd have a screw turn in the wrong way. It'll still work, but it'd turn the other direction. So if you are looking to make a screw that turns in the other direction, that's just how you do it. Instead of going from bottom left to top right, you go from bottom right to top left. After you have the paper all laid out, you can cut it to length and cut it to width. I cut it to width a little bit wider as you can see than the lines were laid out. Um, gives you a little more to tape to the dowel. Um, and when you cut this out to length, it only needs to be approximately um, two thirds the length of your dowel. Well, I'll show you why with this one. Because once you stick the dowel into the guide, you can see by the bottom that the dowel is inserted so that um, the full length of the hole is filled with the dowel. And then you can basically measure from this point to the hub. Um, you don't have to apply a little hub like this. It would have been a good idea actually if I had done that to the other, towel, um, to the other dowel since it's so thin. Um, just make sure if you don't add a hub um, that you make sure the hole for your handle is a little bit lower so that it doesn't 
um, split the top as you're turning it. Um, anyways, so you find out the length from the top of this to here and center the cutter approximately. And that's so you can get the greatest um, thickness of material to tap through. So you can see here from the cutter to here is approximately approximately four inches and then from the cutter to the top of here is about four inches as well. So that means I can um, tap through a workpiece about four inches thick. Um, so then once you have the placement for your cutter, all you have to do is get a spiral that is long enough to go from the cutter to the tip there. So, so that's how you figure out how long to cut this. So now I'll show you how you can get the length of this as well because I showed you using a tap that already exists. Um, you can lay this out on the bottom of here and then like I said I'll be adding those blocks so probably about that much thickness. So then from there and then I'll probably drill the hole for the handle approximately approximately somewhere around there. Um, that should give enough material up top where it shouldn't split. I can even wrap something around there to keep it from splitting. So anyways, you can get the distance between here and here. Approximately there. So that's where the cutter is going to go. So when you stick the spiral onto the dowel here, you only have to cut the spiral up to this point here. Um, so now this is the tricky part. Um, taping this onto the dowel. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It helps to have two people, but if you're going to do it by yourself, which you probably are, um, you can do this in small steps.